us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of this day. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of our lives. Father, our cups truly do runneth over. We owe it all to you. We also have these unspoken prayers before you at this time. You know every heart, every need, every wish, every dream, every concern. And we thank you for not only hearing these prayers, but we thank you for answering them always in perfect season. We also have these prayers before you at this time, Father. We pray for Jody, June. We pray for all those who study God's Word. We thank you for receiving uh, Gunny uh, coming home. We pray for our families. And we pray for those wildfires back west to come to an end. On all these, Father, we ask that you lead that you guide, that you direct, that you touch, and that you heal. In Yeshua's precious holy name we pray. And as always, Father, we pray for all those around the world who are suffering and hurting, Father, that they will turn to you and trust in you and rely on you, even in their times of trouble. And we pray for all those who have come and gone from our chapel, that you watch over them, that they have not forsaken thy word, and that they will return to the sheepfold soon. And we also pray, dear Lord, for Israel and for our nation, <clears throat> for thy kingdom to come, knowing that it will be thy will that will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, to which we await and say, Come, Lord, come. And we know the battle that must be done prior to that event, to which we say, Come, Lord, come. By thy mercy and by thy strength, we will endure and conquer. We pray for their, those first responders. Every day they're on the front lines helping your children. And we pray for our military who are in arms way or who are about to go into arms way for their safety and speedy return home. And as always, Father, we pray for the lost, those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive thy truth. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see. I pray that you open up our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us this day. In Yeshua's precious holy name we pray. Amen. Okay, getting back into our Father's word, we're in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 today. And really what we're going to be discussing today and learning, if you don't know already, or a refresher, if you will, about gifts. Now, there's all kinds of gifts in the world. We're not talking about gifts that uh, you received as a child, and maybe even into adulthood, uh, your birthday parties and, and getting presents. Those are gifts. That's what gifts uh, ch most children look at. Um, these are different kinds of gifts. Um, like myself, um, at a young age, when I was about three or third or fourth grade, somewhere around there, I picked up the guitar and I started learning it. My father had played guitar for many years prior to that. So I guess it was ingrained upon me to, to also do the same. At least that's how I looked at it at the time. And um, I ended up playing it well into my adulthood and even into being a senior. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I have stopped the last couple years, but it's heavily on my mind, and I'm sure I'll uh, pick it up again. That is considered a gift. Well, well, why would I say that? Because I think anything that is given to you to do, and you do it well, and you do it for the glory of God especially, is a gift from God. He gives gifts in many ways, not necessarily playing an instrument. It could be, it could be being a good mother is a gift. There's a lot of women and, and men out there who raise children, but that doesn't, just because they have children, doesn't mean that they are mothers and fathers. They are, by all rights, a mother and a father because God gifted them with a child or children. But being a good parent is a gift because 
they know how to deal with their children. And any of you that have children know what I'm talking about. Because as they grow, they uh, push the envelope, so to speak. They uh, try to get away with some things. And it's not that they're purposely trying to be mean, but this is who and what children are. They, they grow up and they, they push the limits until they learn. And a good parent will teach them what those limits are. And especially what our Father calls a good parent is one that teaches them the ways of the Lord. And if you teach your child in the ways of the Lord, even if they depart it, our Father says they will return to it. And I've seen that happen more times than not. But the gifts we're talking about today are a little bit different. They're called spiritual gifts. Now, Paul's going to go in, in detail on this, but uh, uh, before we get into that, I, I want you to understand that there's a lot of churches today, different denominations, that teach in their congregations that you must possess uh, one or more of these gifts to be considered a member of their church such as uh, speaking in tongues. And they have developed a church system around that. And they teach and they prod young children to learn how to do this. How do I know this? Because I was involved in that situation many, many years ago as a young child, even before I started playing guitar. So I know a little bit from which I speak. But we're going to deal in that today if we, if we get to that point. So, and there's many other spiritual gifts as well, which, we're, which Paul, our Father, is going to speak through Paul and teach us of these gifts. So with that being said, please pick up your Bibles with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, and it reads, Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, he's not calling them stupid. He's saying, look, I, I, I don't want you to be without information about this. Now, why do you think he's, he's teaching about this or being led to teach? Because of what people uh, tell one another of certain things, certain gifts that they must possess to be a part of the uh, Christian society, so to speak, or the hierarchy, if you will, of the church. So Paul's coming out, he's going to talk about spiritual gifts. Verse 2, Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. And uh, now, as ye were led is primary here. In other words, they were taught at an early age to follow, he calls them dumb idols. What he means by those dumb idols is those idols that were not of God. Remember, if, if you put anyone or anything before God, it becomes an idol in your life. But especially back then, they had all kinds of different idols, all kinds of different deities that they would uh, sacrifice to, that worship. they would pray to, that they would worship. And they learned how not to be that way when they became Christians, that there's only one God and one Father of all. And even He, we are not supposed to make an image of, if you, if you recall the commandments. <coughs> no graven image of of false idols and that sort of thing. So he continues in verse 3, Wherefore, I give you to understand, I want you to understand about these things, that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, or that is uh, anathema. This is basically just basically meaning a curse. Now, why would they call Jesus a curse? Because of what some people are ignorant of. They think that um, 
being a slave for the Lord that you're cursed by the Lord, that you've got to do these certain things. And that what Jesus brought out, remember the Sadducee and Pharisee. When Jesus himself walked on this planet and he was healing the, the blind and the sick and the lame and even the dead, what did, what did they call him? That he was a healer because of Beelzebub, because of the devil. Well, see, that's cursing Jesus. That's, that's a, a, an anathema. But see, it says here that no man speaking by the Spirit of God or through the Spirit of God calleth, calleth Jesus accursed. Why? Because he's not. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Spirit. It says ghost here, but ghost isn't written in the manuscript. It's always written here as spirit. So no one can say that Jesus is the Lord unless the Holy Spirit is within them. Why, why, why would he say that? Because the Holy Spirit is what leads, what guides, and what directs people into the proper understanding of things, including the Holy Scriptures. That's why we always pray before we read the Holy Scriptures. We ask the Lord to open up our eyes so that we can see. We ask Him to open up our ears so that we can hear His words as He speaks to us. You say, well, wait a minute now. You're speaking to us. No. Uh, basically, verbally, yes, I'm speaking directly to you. But it is, and I always pray that the Holy Spirit be my speech. The Holy Spirit be my thoughts. The Holy Spirit... Uh, comes through me to you directly. It is not that I can teach you and raise you up to understanding. It is the Holy Spirit of Almighty God that does this. And it doesn't matter whether it's on YouTube. It doesn't matter whether it's in a congregational setting. It doesn't matter whether it's one-on-one. -on -one, it doesn't matter if you are by yourself. If you are looking to your Father to lead, guide, and direct you, He brings forth His Holy Spirit that remember and where all this started. It started after the cross where our Father sent the Holy Spirit to those on Pentecost Day. And um, it was the 50th day after Christ's uh, resurrection. And that Pentecost Day was the beginning of the teachings of the Holy Spirit to who? To whomsoever will. To whomsoever will. So, our Father is telling us you must have the Holy Spirit to even acknowledge the power and the authority of Jesus the Christ. Verse 4, now, there are diversities of gifts. Now remember, we're talking about spiritual gifts. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So he's putting something out here that there's different levels. There's different levels of gifts that our Father bestows on mankind. Now, what kind of gifts? We're talking about spiritual gifts, which we'll get to in just a moment. He'll, he'll list uh, many of them. But you can ask yourself, well, once I become a Christian... Why can't I possess all these things? Well, the only thing I can think of is, and, and it's probably accurate, if we possessed all of these gifts, I don't think we could stand ourselves. I mean, with human nature and the, the, the puffiness uh, or prideful thinking that we can get into sometimes, and I'll just use the example of, of myself uh, being um, learning to be chosen of our Father. It was a big deal for me. And I, like many others, say, well, well, who am I? But there were times throughout the years that I had to do battle with thinking that the knowledge that I have been blessed with, 
that did not come from me. It came from our Father. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Yes, I had to learn through his scripture. But it was his spirit that led God and direct for the understanding of that. But there were times that when I would talk to someone or hear about someone, think maybe negatively about them. Where I shouldn't be. I should look at them as needing instruction of our Father. Instead of thinking, well, they're, they're not getting it, so... You know, I'm going to stay away from them, kind of, kind of thinking. And that's not where our Father wants us to be. Especially when someone is in, let's say, a church setting, and they believe in that church setting, yet they are doing some things that are going against our Father's Word, such as Easter versus Passover. There's millions of people that are following Easter. Now, are we to look negatively towards those people? No. We want to bring them out of the preconceived, or not preconceived, but taught, because they were taught in an early age how to follow these things. Well, we need to, with love and compassion and long-suffering at times, many times, Try to bring them out of false doctrine. And just saying it's false doctrine to them that are following Easter will start a big war. And it will turn off YouTube in some cases of when they hear this. But take, take it back to the, to the original writings. Take it back to even Webster's Dictionary. I think it's a fourth year collegiate going all the way back there. And it gives you a definition, a true definition of Ishtar or Easter, where it came from. So, being saying all that is that we can get in some kind of attitude problem of having knowledge and others not having that knowledge and they don't want to accept that knowledge. We ourselves, if we're not careful can become cocky, can, can become puffed up. And that's not where our Lord wants us to be. So when he's talking about these spiritual gifts, he's talking about utilizing these spiritual gifts for his glory, not for our own uh, uh, building up per se. It is a building up of edification, of understanding, but not to puff us up, not to make us more than what we truly are. Not to be prideful. Not to be prideful. Thank you. Now, um, verse 5. And there are differences, or there are different kinds of service of administrations. What does that mean? Well, how you utilize these gifts. It's, it's almost like you're in a, uh, an office, so to speak. There's all kinds of different offices, all kinds of different ways you can administer these gifts. But the same Lord. See, this keeps going back to the Lord. In other words, doesn't matter what kind of different gifts, doesn't matter what kind of different powers, it doesn't matter about how you administer those powers, it all is supposed to come from the Lord. So, Excuse me. If you keep that in mind, keep that understanding that when you utilize these gifts, that you give praise and honor to our Father who brought these gifts forward in the first place. And if our Father gives a gift, who are you to say whether a person should use it or not use it? Who are you to say that it's a proper gift or not a proper gift? It'd be like you saying there's somebody in a different congregational setting who's in a church setting that believe in Easter. Well, maybe that individual does have the truth, but our Father may have led them to that congregation to plant a seed of truth. And who are you to say, well, you shouldn't be a part of that congregation? You see how this works? So there's all kinds of differences of administration of these gifts, 
But there's still, there's only one Lord. There's still only one Spirit. Verse 6. And there are diversities of operations, how people operate with those gifts. But, here it is again, it is the same God which worketh all in all. So, if God is working in all these gifts, we have to accept, number one, those gifts, and number two, we have it to accept that we're all in this together. See? What's the key factor here? The key factor is that Jesus is our Lord. There's only one God. There's only one Holy Spirit. And as long as a person is, has accepted that and is in walking in the ways of the Lord, we cannot fight against this. Now, 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 why do I say that? Because this is what's happening today. And, and maybe even in some of my teachings in the past, I have been too overzealous in some of these other congregations because I felt by the particular uh, scenario that I came out with whenever I was teaching it that they were not teaching our Father's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Well, some churches don't do that. Some churches are what's called an evangelical church. And an evangelical church, it is their mission to teach people to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, where I went off half-cocked sometimes, saying, well, once a congregation is saved, it's blasphemous to keep them there over and over and over again. Well, the way I look at this is what happens is certain churches are stepping stones in life, or should be. It's like a, a person will be moved to go to a place that evangel and evangelizes them, teaches them that they need the Lord Jesus Christ, and teaches them how to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not do this in our Shepherd's Chapel. Why? Well, we have on rare occasions with individuals, such as off-camera, and very rarely on-camera. We, we, we know that everyone must accept the Lord Jesus Christ to grow in the ways of the Lord. But our primary mission is to take a person, a Christian, after they have been evangelized, and then teach them more of the Word of God than the evangelical message. In other words, how to get from not point A, but point B to Z. In other words, to, to learn how to, from being a milk Christian, to being a meat Christian. And that's what we were called to do. It's a different gift. But we're all working together. And for me to, to come down on evangelical churches is a wrong thing to do, which I try not to do. To, unless, what? You have to understand, too, that not all are called to be meat Christians. Some can't handle what's necessary to be a meat Christian. That is very true. Uh, what what Pastor Don is saying over here is that there are times, and we don't have that privy of information, but our Father does because our Father created them and they were in the first earth, heaven, age before they were born. Different subject for a different time. But sometimes they come to a point of learning and they can't learn anymore. They don't want to learn anymore. Why? Well, the bottom line is, the way our Father puts it, the more you're given, the more is required of you. And if you don't do those requirements that our Father wants you to do, you can find yourself in deep doo-doo with our Father. You know, and, and find, find yourself suffering. And our Father doesn't want you to suffer. 
So he may wait, like it's called put blinders on people. He may put blinders on them until the millennial period, until there won't be no restrictions in this flesh, because they won't be in flesh. I believe that's what Donna's talking mm -hmm. about. So, verse 7 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Now, this is mankind. This is man, woman, child even. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. What does that mean to profit? To become a millionaire? No. That means to profit spiritually, to grow spiritually. Now, what does this say? It says it's given. It's, 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 not, it's not something that necessarily you even go out and search for. This is freely given to mankind from our Father to profit them. What, what's the first thing that you're given if you become a Christian? Well, you're given the want to be a Christian. You may not know, come here from sick, and you may not know nothing about the Lord or anything He stands for, but there's a desire in you, and that desire is, excuse me, <coughs> sinuses. It's the desire of the Holy Spirit for you to grow spiritually, to come to know your Father. Our Father did not create you to not know Him. So you're, you, you come into this world, we all come in it the same way. Blind as a bat, a babe, not knowing anything. We don't even know how to eat. You know, we have natural things in our body that, that performs. Our brain tells certain things to happen, and it happens. But as we grow, I mean, we've got to learn how to crawl. We've got to learn how to walk. We've got to learn how to walk before we learn how to run. We've got to even learn how to talk, see? Now, all these things are natural occurrences in the human nature body. But once you learn the basics, there's so much more to learn. How many times have you heard someone say, and you may have said it yourself, why am I here? Well, when you learn about the Lord, you, when you learn about the Word, when you learn about Him, you come to learn why you are here. And as you grow and mature in the Word of God, you grow and you, you, you spiritually prosper. You, you gain the knowledge. Perfect example of, of, of just recently, and I'm not going to uh, say the name or anything, but it was a, a news program that uh, there was a, a large gathering of people complaining and, and carrying signs of their, their um, um, the difficulties that they have with our president today. And they were all out there and they were protesting and all this. So this newscaster wanted to go out and ask them, okay, well, what is it that you don't like? So he went out and he's talking to these people and, and they're saying, well, I, I don't like this president be, be, because uh, he can't be trusted. So the newscasters say, all right, well, what is it that you can't trust him on? Well, he keeps changing his mind. Okay, I understand that, but what is it that he changed his mind on to cause you to be out here to protest? And the protester finally says, well, I don't want to be interviewed anymore. Now, if this just happened once, I would say, well, this, you know, it's kind of a joke or something. But this happened over and over and over again that day that, that nobody could really put issues on the problem. They were just repeating what they were being told on other news agencies. Now, why do I bring that up? Because there's a lot of confusion today with people. They don't know why they are angry. They, they come up with their own ideas of why they're angry, but when you pin it down, why a person's angry, why a person's frustrated, they say, well, my job, my wife, my, my, my whatever, whatever. But the point is, people don't realize that they are confused. 
and they are following a society that is telling them how to feel, how to act, and how to deal with things. And that is, beloved, what the Word says is of the world. Now, when you come to our Father's Word, when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct, what does He do? He filters through all the smoke screens. He filters through, allows you to understand why things are happening the way they are and how to overcome those emotions, those negative emotions. To, I mean, isn't it where we all want to be happy? I don't care who you are. Everybody wants to be at peace. Everybody wants to be happy. But they have their own preconceptions or ideas of how to achieve that. And they think, if, well, if I just get me a better job, if I just get me a better car, if I just get me a better spouse, if I just have better children, if I just have... See, they're never satisfied with what they have because they don't understand what they have has been given gifts of God, freely given to them, but they're not willing to accept it. Why? Because they don't know the power and the authority and they don't know their Lord. Because if you know your Lord, He teaches you these things of how to appreciate, how to love, how to care, how to manage your life. And you become what's called a new creation. You become actually a different person from what you were before. How do I know this? Because I am one. I'm a still work in progress. But compared to who I was and the way I used to think, I'm not that person anymore. I'm completely different, you know, yet still being me, you know. But I've learned. I've learned how to overcome. You know, like, like being married to my wife for 37 years. Those 37 years have gone by just like a puff of smoke. It's been so quick. But the thing is, I really didn't learn how to truly love her until I learned how to love the Lord and put Him first. And even that was a struggle at first. Thinking, well, I was, and, and she thought the same thing, that I was selling her short, that church was my mistress, you know. But it's something we both had to learn. And now she puts the Lord first, above me. She loves me with all her heart, but she loves the Lord the most. And she'll never go against him, such as I won't go against him. So we learned how to, you should have listened to our conversation last night, uh, which I won't bring up, but there's times that we, 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 on the Sabbath day, and other times that we just come up with thoughts about the Lord and, and, and his word and, and, and the way things are, and we just get in these, these discussions that are just totally in depth, you know. Where does that come from? From us? No, that comes from the Lord, wanting us to grow and to prosper in His Word. And that's what this is talking about here. It's for all of mankind. Verse 8, For to one is given, these are talking about the gifts now, For to one is given by the Spirit the Word of Wisdom. Notice it's the word of wisdom. How do you gain wisdom? Listen. To another, the word of knowledge. Here it is. By the same spirit. Now why is he dividing up wisdom from knowledge? You would think if a person has wisdom, that they would have knowledge. Remember Solomon? Solomon... When, when the Lord asked him, what did he want to, to in life? Solomon didn't, didn't <coughs> excuse me, pick for himself. Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom to govern God's children in God's ways. And because uh, Solomon didn't ask for riches and fame and fortune, God gifted him with Wisdom beyond any man that ever walked this earth except for Christ. 
Now, you would think with that wisdom, he would have knowledge. But you, wisdom tells you that you need to have knowledge, that you need to learn knowledge. And evidently Solomon didn't learn at all. Why? Because he failed, did he not? By bringing in idols and uh, because of all his uh, wives and 700 wives and concubines. They wanted idols in, in, in the temple. He brought idols into the temple of the Lord, which caused him great problems. But I want to read to you, and this is uh, just one verse in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 says, The fear, or here it means reverence or love, of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You want knowledge? That's where it has to start. Now, we're not talking about knowledge of how to become a brain surgeon or how to become a, a, a good guitar player. We're talking about knowledge, spiritual knowledge, knowledge that will teach you everything you need to know to keep you out of trouble and to get you to the kingdom of God. The fear or reverence or the love of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, the, the, your father's telling you, look, you're a fool. You're a fool if you despise godly wisdom. Now, how hard is that to understand? Now, there's all kinds of knowledge in this world, how to deal with the things of this world. But let me tell you something. The knowledge of the Lord will see through all that and to teach you how to rise above the things of this world. Our Father knows that you have to live here. You have to live on this planet. You have to deal with the, the dregs and the and all the negatives that come about from this world. But he teaches you how to deal with it, how to face it head on, without having so much difficulties in life, without having confusion. In other words, he teaches you how to deal with this so that you, every day of your life, can actually have peace in your life. When the world is going to hell in a handbasket, you can be right in the middle of ground zero and have peace. Now, that can only come from your father. That cannot come from any other person, place, or thing. And when people try to put a job ahead of God or a spouse ahead of God or a car ahead of God, in other words, they make idols in their life, they're not going to have peace. Why? Because without God, without the Spirit of God leading, guiding, and directing you, you're never going to have that kind of peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding, meaning passes all understanding of the way this world thinks. People will start looking at you, and if this has happened to you, I praise you. Because if you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, accepted His ways, walked in His ways, and your life is different now, and your friends are looking at you like you're coming from, from, from Jupiter. I praise you because this is exactly what happens. If a person is walking in the world, they do not want to participate in people who are walking with the Lord. Why? Why don't they want to have a part of this? Well, you, you can only answer that by maybe what did you think in the early days? When you were first learning how to become a Christian, was it that, well, I don't want to lose my friends? Well, are they really friends if they go against you in the ways of the Lord? Are they really friends that won't be there in your deepest hour of need? Oh, they were there with me. Yes, as long as you were on their bandwagon. But once you left that bandwagon of the world, they didn't want no part of you. But who are you trying to impress, your friends or God? Your friends aren't going to get you to the kingdom. The only one who will get you to the kingdom is the Lord. The only one. So why not do things his way? I mean, tell me about the things that he has us do that we regret. Nothing. 
Absolutely nothing. I have a, I have a little input. We're st well, we're still works in progress. Yes. Okay. There's no denying that. Still learning. My big thing of learning is learning how to listen when that small voice speaks to me of the Lord, especially when the world's over here shouting and and all. We had this heavy rain these last several days. And the news reports are saying people were losing power left and right. And I don't like to to pre-do things that much. In other words, to, to plan ahead. I'm not really great at that yet, working on it. But there was this nagging, I, I, I say nagging because it was very like, do this, do this, do this. Voice telling me to get your things ready for the next day of work. We had been off. And I needed to iron clothes and such. And so I pushed myself to do that with the thought in my mind, well, if we lose power, I won't be able to do that the next day. And you'll be, you know, without. And I did it and got everything in, in order and went to bed. And during the night, the power did go off. Mm -hmm. But it came back on. Mm -hmm. And when you told me the power went off, I go, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Because it could have went off and stayed off. Now it's kind of like the Lord going, "See, this is what could have happened." And 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 why does that happen to us? Um, everything's everything's a teaching. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, what's the whole point? What's the whole point of us being here? The Lord created us for His pleasure, but what pleases Him? What pleases Him is that we love Him. Okay, and why are we on this planet in these flesh bodies? I mean, it grieved our Father to make us in flesh bodies. It says that in His Word. It grieved Him. But He knew because of our nature and our free will that we have, we have to have a choice whether or not to love Him or love ourselves. Love Him or love the devil. Love Him or love the world. And once we have that free will choice and we choose him, that means everything to him. That's why people get blessed. People don't love him to be blessed. People love him because he's our father. He's our creator. He, 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 he's, he gives us life eternally. See? So, what he wants us to learn along the way is how to, as Donna put it, listen. Listen to him. Listen to his spirit that he brings forth to all of mankind. That's saint sinner like folks. Don't think it's just the saint that gets to hear. No, it's saint sinner alike that our Father touches every single person on this planet. And who are we to negate that? We're not. We're supposed to allow that spirit to flow freely. And when it does, when our Lord teaches us, when he speaks to us in however ways he does, sometimes it's through another person. But however he gets through to us, we are to listen and we are to obey. And we are to accept that and grow with it. And let me tell you something. Two, one of two things happens when this takes place. You accept that the Lord, you accept His Spirit, you listen to it, and you grow, and you mature, or you push it away. Now what happens? Two things happen. One, if you accept the Lord, you accept His teachings, you accept His ways, you accept His voice, you prosper in His ways. I mean, where it's called, your cup runneth over. You start to see the blessings. Around you here. see all kinds of blessings. I mean, just unbelievable amount of blessings that are constantly being poured forth upon you and your family. However, if you're on the other side of the coin and you push that spirit away, guess what? You don't hear from him. Why? He does not want to be where he does not is not wanted. Is not wanted. Thank you.
He does not want to be where he is not wanted. And he will allow you, because he loves you, he will allow you to walk in the ways of the world, to be enthralled by Satan, to be enthralled by the world. And you're going to find out eventually, you're going to find out eventually, and it may be on your deathbed, that it was all vanity. And that you need the Lord. Because at that moment, I'm talking about when you're, you're in the throes of transforming from this flesh age into the next, that you come to realize you need God. That's why the, in many uh, captions say there's no, there's no mm -hmm. atheists in foxholes. You know. Now, notice in verse 8 it says the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge where is that word you have it right here this is the word this is the word of knowledge this is the word of wisdom and who is the word your Lord is the word in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God God is brings forth that word he brings himself forth now Another gift is, verse 9, to another, faith. What? To another, faith by the same Spirit. Now, now, why would he say faith? Well, doesn't everybody have faith that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ? They may have knowledge of him. They may even have wisdom of him. But how much faith do they have in him? Does this also pertain to spreading your gift of faith with others and to encourage the faith in them? It can. It can, but the thing is, I remember talking to one of our parishioners who's gone home now to be with the Lord, and she was having difficulties in, in I can't remember exact situation whether it was an illness or, or what. And I can't remember exactly what I said to her, but I, I'm going to assume, and I believe it was by the Spirit of God that I was speaking to her. And she looked at me, and she's been following the Lord since she was a little girl. And she looked at me and says, I can't believe how strong your faith is. Because I knew, see, I knew that God would be in control. I know God's in control, period. No matter, I mean, I go, I got my own pains right now. But I don't put God second in anything, and I don't blame Him for any of it. My faith is, I know that there's going to come a day I'm not going to have no pain at all. Now, that may come in this flesh body, which I doubt, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it will be in his eternal kingdom. And I know that all those that follow the Lord will all be together again, and that we will never have to say goodbye, because we will be together forever. Now that's faith. That's unshakable faith. And that's why he says to another, faith by the same Spirit. We all don't have the same level of faith. But that doesn't make you a heathen if you don't have the faith of a mustard seed. It just means we all have different gifts. And one of them is that kind of faith. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Now notice it says healing here, not miracles. What is he talking about healing? What do you think he's talking about healing here? Uh, that could be healing the Spirit. If someone is down and uh, sick in spirit, uh, depressed or whatever, talking to them and making a connection between them and, and going to God with, with what's bothering them, to lift them up that way. Or, or ministering to someone who's sick, even, you know, taking care of them or feeding them if they're hungry. I mean, after all, what's, what's the ultimate healing? Ultimately, it's being in the kingdom. To be with the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, to be with the Lord. It's not everybody can talk to someone like that. Now, 
Well, let me read the next verse, part of it. Verse 10, to another the working of miracles. Okay, now we come to, to what people consider the healing. No, these, this is uh, a divine miracle. Now, with that being said, people want to believe like, like well, we got a person in our church. Have you ever heard this one? Maybe even seen it. We got a person in our church who can heal people. Well, number one, contrary to what that statement said, nobody can heal anybody. Because what did it say here? Of knowledge by the same Spirit. It is the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of the Lord. It is the Lord that heals. Okay. Not the person. Now, now I was privy uh, over the years, but this one particular one comes to mind about miracles. To me, a miracle is, is something that surpasses all understanding, especially when it comes to modern science. I walked into this guy's room who had cancer. This happened years ago. I don't even remember his name. I think I remember his name. And I met him at the flea market. And... Um, he had cancer, and, and the doctors had told him that he had about six months to live. But they were going to use this aggressive treatment, and they were going to start, and they're taking all these, you know, x-rays and everything of him. So we prayed, you know, we prayed over him, laid hands on him, and asked the Lord to heal him, to remove the cancer, if it's his will. Well, I remember going the next day, and there was about five or six doctors in his room, and they, you know, the, those things they have on the wall where they check, put up the X-rays, and they're looking, and they're all talking amongst themselves. And this guy's in the bed, almost jumping out of it, just all excited. And I said, uh, "What's going on?" And he says, "Well, those doctors over there can't figure out why I have no cancer today, because they took another X-ray, uh, and it was completely clear." Now just, I saw the x-rays, and, and he had mass, I mean a big mass, and the other x-ray, looking around the shoulders of the doctors, it was completely clear. Now, now, some people think, well, you're a miracle worker. I did not heal anybody. It is God that heals. Now, just because that happened does not mean that I can go out and heal anybody. I prayed over people after that for cancer to be removed or for them to be healed, and it didn't happen. They went on to be with the Lord. Some are still here today and fighting cancer, and I prayed for them as well. Now, I cannot tell you why that God heals some in the flesh, and doesn't heal others, other than I believe that Father has a work for them to do. Or for them to even learn more than what they know. That's the only thing I can come up with. But I can't tell you exactly why a, a person was healed in the hospital and another person went home to be with the Lord. Because ultimately going home to be with the Lord is the ultimate healing. So whether we live or whether we die, we're going to be with the Lord if we follow in his ways. And we're going to be at peace either way. But as far as miracles, don't think just because a person is used of God to heal, that they're going to be used of God to heal every time they laid hands on people. You say, well, what about Paul? What about Paul? Paul was a healer. He was used as a healer. He worked miracles. Uh, just his his people with their faith they were healed just like that woman who says well if his shadow touches me I will be healed that was her faith in the Lord that healed her not her faith in Paul say and that's how it works that's how it works so to another the working of miracles these are gifts to another, prophecy. What's prophecy? Teaching. 
teaching of what? Events in the past. To future. Events of the future. To another, discerning of spirits. What's discerning of spirits? To Please. knowing whether or not you're dealing with a holy spirit, spiritual person, or an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. No, there's a lot of evil out there. But not everybody's, uh, Satan's not behind every bush. There's a lot of evil people out there today, and more so even today. There's terrible things. They're behaving just, I can see the end of the earth, the end of this, not the end of the earth, but the end of this world age coming soon because of the behavior of people even at a young age. Even ones that couldn't learn how to become bad at that age. But they were born bad. You say, well, how can anybody be born bad? Well, God says, Esau I loved, or um, Jacob I loved and Esau I hated while they were yet in the womb. And to understand that, to have that knowledge, you have to understand about the first earth, first heaven age. That uh, Esau must have done something terribly against her father and went against him. Different subject for a different time. Okay, here we go to another one. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, this isn't the gobbledygook that a lot of people are talking about today. These are the same tongues that is basically, an, uh, it's not the unacquired language. It's language like what Luke, uh, or Paul, and Luke, I guess, but Paul in particular could speak multiple languages. And these are where people are gifted to be able to understand and to learn quickly other languages. And others learn quickly how to interpret those languages to help people. Now, where does this come in spiritually? Well, if a person's from another country and they're talking about the Lord, they can interpret what they're saying and then tell people about what the Word of God is saying so people know how to say amen or when to say it. That's what this is talking about, spiritual gifts, not the... Uh, uh, necessarily the the tongue spoken on Pentecost Day remember that was uh, de amorezzo glossa that was the uh, forked uh, multiple languages that was spoken by one person and they could all hear in their own tongue their own language from wherever they were but verse 11 says all these hear this all these gifts the miracles the wisdom the knowledge, the faith, the healing. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man or woman, to mankind, dividing to every man's severally as he will. It is the Lord that brings forth these gifts and it is the Lord who appoints these gifts to whomsoever he will. So for us to say, well, you know, if you don't have this kind of gift, you can't be a part of us. You're off base. You're totally off base. You're misinterpreting everything that our Father stands for. Because we are all given gifts of some sort or another. And it is up to us to utilize those gifts. Verse 12. I'm out of time, ain't I? Let me do one verse. One more verse. Verse 12. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Meaning that we all have, which we'll get more to in next week, we all have different parts of our body, but it all works together to help us and to, 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 to help us get through life. And this is exactly what Christ does. All these different gifts are for our 
uh, for, for our growing, for our maturing, for our profiting in the Word of God. So I, I pray that you all receive this message today and you, you look at those gifts that you have and grow in them and honor them, which in turn is honoring your Father. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. We owe you all, Father, of these gifts, all our love. And I pray for everyone here today and all their families and all those on YouTube that you watch over them. Lead, guide, and direct as you always do. And I thank you, Father, for this opportunity. For we do love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths, and with all our souls. For it is in Yahshua's precious holy name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory.